Straight Talk from Israel. You're listening to Israel News Talk Radio. Know thine enemy. How a government, how a bad government takes control over your life. That's what I'm going to be talking to you about today. I am solo, all alone, talking to you about things that have been churning in my soul, churning in my mind. And I just want to put some things out there that I think people need to be aware of so they can notice it and then they can do something about it. Because what I see happening with the left, that's not just America, because Twitter is international, Facebook international, social media brings the whole globe together talking. And when they silence people, it's not just America, it's not just the left that got voted in, it is affecting the entire world. And there's an agenda, I believe, of my opinion. And we need to understand what's happening. And we need to be able to fight back because what I see happening is that people who uh, voted for Trump, who wanted to see a free America, wanted to honor the Constitution, wants faith and family, has conservative values, are being silenced, not just being silenced, but being threatened. I'll talk about that later in the show. And... We cannot just say, this is not fair, this is not right, what are we going to do? You'll never win a war when you fight it defensively. You have to go on the offense. And that means we have to point fingers. I'm not talking about being violent. I'm talking about marketing. I'm talking about saying things that are the truth and not being quiet about it. I'm saying about exposure, exposing the evil because that's the only way you can stop it. Not by saying, why is this happening? And we have to stop this. Oh, and uh, Trump has a plan and he's going to save us. I mean, maybe he does have a plan. I haven't seen that work. I've already covered that in one show. Halavai, God willing, it would work that there was something like that. But in the meantime, we cannot sit back and do nothing thinking that some plan in the sky is going to save us all. We need to know who the enemy is. We need to identify the enemy and we need to take charge. We need to point our fingers. We need to identify it and we need to fight it. All this is coming up in the show. We'll be right back. How did a nice Jewish girl from Delaware end up living in Israel? Shalom, I'm Natalie Sapinski. Join me on my show, Returning Home. Meet different people who have moved to Israel. Hear their personal stories, their highs, their lows, and everything in between. Each week, we talk to experts on immigration and the process of moving to Israel. Listen to Returning Home every Thursday, only on Israel News Talk Radio. Know thine enemy, how a government takes control over your life. And you do know, right, that we're all living basically under martial law. Martial law is the temporary imposition of direct military control of normal civil functions or suspension of civil law by a government, especially in response to a temporary emergency. Isn't that exactly what we're living through right now? We have a temporary emergency that's lasted almost a year now. And we've been locked in our homes. We've been forbidden to go to work unless the government says you're essential. We're forbidden from gathering with family. We're forbidden 
to live our lives as we want. We're even forbidden to go and pray. Now, at the beginning of this pandemic, I was all for it. I didn't know. I was scared. I think like most people in the world, we were bombarded with news about coronavirus and people dropping dead on their feet in the middle of the street and all sorts of things. It was horrific. But now that we see that the coronavirus, that when it's gotten, uh, when people catch it, and it is very, it is real, and it is very contagious, and it can be deadly. I don't deny any of that. However, 99% plus survive coronavirus. And if you get it, a lot of people don't even know that they had it. They have to get tested to know that they had this quote-unquote deadly disease. Do I smell a rat here? Oops, I'm not allowed to say that anymore today. Maybe I'll skip ahead just because I'm on the topic. Did you know that PETA came out with a tweet the other day? PETA is People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals. Judaism, by the way, talks all the time about the ethical treatment of animals. However, PETA here went way too far this week when they called for people, that's all of us, you and I, to stop calling someone an animal as an insult. They say it reinforces a myth that humans are superior to other animals and justified in violating them. Now, let me say something here. According to the Bible, which the creator of the world gave us, that he wrote, and he created animals and he created mankind, men, human beings, I should say, are superior to animals. And that has been an accepted thing. It's not a nice thought, but to us today, because of the way we've been brought up and bombarded by propaganda, etc. But throughout the world, it's been that way. Animals are there to service human beings. It is our responsibility to treat animals well. We have to treat them with kindness and we have to make sure that they have enough to eat and we don't, we don't want them to suffer. We don't want to burden them. We have responsibilities to animals. We do. But they're not on the same level as human beings. In fact, human beings eat animals. Human beings, unfortunately, experiment on animals. But it's been something with us for as long as we have known. And again, I'm going to emphasize that we have a responsibility to animals. We have to make sure that they don't suffer, that they're treated well. We love animals. But animals teach us great lessons as well. But they're telling us now we cannot speak as we have for the last 5,000 years plus. They say using animals as insults perpetuates speciesism. Instead of calling someone a chicken, you are now told to call them a coward instead. Instead of a rat, you, have, you call them a snitch. Instead of calling someone a snake, you call them a jerk. Instead of someone calling them a pig, you say repulsive. And a sloth, you use the word lazy. Now, I'd like to see first the leftists stop using the word pig when it comes to policemen. If they want to set an example, let them stop calling policemen pigs. I'm going to go back to what I want to talk about first to lay down a foundation here. And some of my thoughts here may be garbled a bit because it's just all sorts of things going through my mind. But I want to share them with you because I think we need to realize where we are at this time in history. We are living under martial law. People are losing their livelihoods. They're losing their jobs. They can't pay their rents. They cannot uh, put food on the table. There are divorces perhaps that are brewing or have already started because of this terrible pressure upon people and this unnormal uh, uh, reality that we're living in. And we have to stop this. And I'm going to repeat something I said on a previous show. It's a great meme that I saw going around. And it says, if you allow the government to break the law in an emergency, they will create emergencies to break the law. I want to repeat that again. I did last time as well. If you allow the government to break the law in an emergency, they will create emergencies to break the law. Now, in order 
to understand who is doing all of this, we have to see who is in power. And that is, all of this came within the last year. Go back to last January or February. The Western world still wasn't affected uh, by the the, uh, COVID-19, by the Wuhan virus, by the coronavirus. We were still going on with our lives. It was just starting, just starting to, to go across the world globally. But our lives were normal. Never did we think about having autonomous zones in cities with no law and order. Never did we think about defunding the police. Never did we think about being under martial law. Never did we think about the left communism rising in the United States of America with a K today. And that's less than a year ago. Look how things can change in less than a year. We're talking about maybe nine months, 10 months, maybe 10 months time, 11 months. Depends what country you're in. Well, we have seen that the left has risen and let's call it what it is. They're not just Democrats because the Democratic Party was never so crazy and evil as it is today. Never. What we see today is a Marxist or communist revolution taking place in the United States. And I think that people need to call it what it is because they are doing exactly what these dictatorships and what the communist governments did in the past to their people, to their own people. We're not even talking about their enemies because they make anybody who doesn't think like them their enemy. You are forbidden to be an individual in a communist country. In a communist ideology, individualism is trampled upon, it's looked down upon, and it's crushed. Go read some books by Ayn Rand. I think that that should be required reading, uh, or at least highly suggested reading to, uh, to schools today. But of course it won't be. We have uh, a government today that is allowing these high-tech companies to silence people. I believe, this is my opinion, that they're working hand-in-hand together, the media as well. And they are now calling anybody who does not think like them and agree with them domestic terrorists. You are now labeled. Now, I know they've been talking about this in news. You've been watching Fox and, and uh, One America News, I think it's called, and, and uh, Newsmax, etc. They've been rallying around this cry that, hey, we're now considered domestic terrorists. And this is true. But it's not enough that we recognize what we're being labeled as. We need to point our fingers right back at them and call them for what they are. It's not Joe Biden and the Democrats that are in power. It is a communistic leftist regime that stifles individualism because you can't think like you want. Can you imagine that they are targeting people because they voted for their favorite candidate? It's not that we're conservatives or Trump supporters. We're just people who didn't vote for Biden. We're people who had a choice in elections. That's what democracies are. They give you a choice. And we voted for a different candidate. And if you tell people that you voted for a different candidate, which obviously was Trump, that means you're a domestic terrorist today. And that means that you can be targeted, that you could maybe be fined, arrested. Who knows? In the future, maybe even, God forbid, disappear. Because these are all things that have already happened when you saw a communist revolution, when you saw the communists take over. And it's not just Trump that's the enemy. There's a bigger enemy because after they get Trump, you see, it's not enough to get Trump out of office. They have to destroy him. And that's why they're impeaching him a second time, even though he's not even holding office anymore. But they're taking him, they're silencing him, his bank accounts are being closed. They are trying to destroy him. But even more powerful than Donald Trump is the movement that followed him. And that movement is anybody who didn't vote for Joe Biden. You are dangerous.
You know, World Net Daily reported the House Democrats' bill on domestic terrorism domestic terrorism, is aimed at conservatives, warns former U.S. Republican Tulsi Gabbard. Um, I'm sorry, U.S. Uh, Representative Tulsi Gabbard, Democrat from Hawaii. Introduced by Republican by Representative Adam Schiff, a Democrat from California, the Domestic Terrorism Prevention Act of 2021 would undermine constitutional rights of almost half of the country. She said in an interview Friday with Fox News. Guess who's saying this now? The CIA, former CIA, CIA director. A CIA director who has everything on everybody. They'll know who you are. We'll be right back. Shalom, everybody. Making a difference often takes just one moment and one person at a time. I am Orly Benny Davis, your show host on Israel News Talk Radios from Jerusalem with love. You'll be hearing people talking about politics, religion, social issues, and making a better tomorrow. Join me, Orly Benny Davis, for God and Country. From Jerusalem with love. Wednesdays on Israel News Talk Radio. All right, we are back here at the Tamar Yona Show on IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com. And I was telling you just before the break about an uh, article from World uh, Net Daily. And they're saying that uh, Rep- U.S. Representative Tulsi Gabbard, Democrat from Hawaii, who distinguished herself in the, in the 2020 primary by criticizing some of the far-left views of her opponents, noted the remarks last week of former... Get this, CIA Director Brennan in an, in an MSNBC interview. He's the former CIA director. I want you to think about that because that means that he has probably all the dirt and or personal information of just about every American. Do you know how much they can do with dirt or information on you that's private, you don't want to get out? Or how they know where your weaknesses are, how they can twist your arms to do it, they, uh, to, that you should do what they want them to do? This is uh, very, very disturbing to me. Anyway, let's continue. Brennan said that the Biden team was, quote, moving in laser light fashion to uncover insurgency, to uncover insurgency movements that are part of an, quote, unholy alliance of, quote, religious extremists, authoritarians, fascists, bigots, racist, racist, nativist, even libertarians. This is what the CIA director Brennan said in an MSNBC interview, apparently. He said law enforcement, homeland security, intelligence, and even the defense officials are doing everything possible to root out what seems to be a very, very serious and insidious threat to our democracy and our republic. Do you hear what's going on? They're using everything possible to root out what seems to be, quote, a very, very serious and insidious threat to our democracy and our republic. And who is that? Those people who are religious extremists. But you know the word extremists, they're using it here as a, uh, I I think that they're using it here as an adjective. Someone who's religious is God-fearing. But they just slap the word extremist on them, and all of a sudden now they're Al-Qaeda, Now they're the Taliban. Now they are domestic terrorists. You see, religion, religious people have always been a threat to communist governments because in a communist system, the collective, the government has to be the God. 
That's why they said God is dead. That's why they closed the churches and the synagogues and they taught atheism. Because you cannot have God-fearing people because if you have religious people who believe in God, then God's laws are more important and stronger than the government's laws. And they can't have that. That's a threat. God is a threat to communistic governments. And a person who's religious, they just slap the word extremist afterwards, and that's you. If you're a religious person, if you're a God-fearing person. And of course, we've all been called racists and bigots and fascists if we disagree with what the mode is of the day that the left is touting. Even people who are liberals, and there are the liberals are mostly left-wing people, but they're more, they're supposed to be more tolerant people, but even libertarians are going to be now the enemy of this communistic left government. That's my opinion of what the Biden administration is. Even they're going to be enemies because why? Because they're more tolerant. Liber- what is the famous saying that uh, I may not like what you say, but I'll go to my death defending your right to say it? Something like that. Those were the liberals. We are living in 1984, Fahrenheit 451, a brave new world. I I don't know. I mean, just slap on whatever you want. The Soviet Union of 2020, 2021. Get ready now. Don't be surprised if there start we start seeing other things happening that communist revolutions brought upon. You know, I just finished reading a book about the Iranian Islamic revolution when the Shah of Iran, who tried to westernize his country, was basically chased out and the Khomeini, the Ayatollah Khomeini came in and took over. And she described in this book what it was like to live as a non-Muslim in Islamic Iran during the revolution and afterwards. And these things came on slowly. It wasn't all at once. First this, then this, then this, kind of like the Holocaust. First the Jews have to wear yellow stars. Then they can't uh, be in business here. They can't go to school. They can't go to university. They're kicked out. They can't marry here. They can't do that. They can, whatever it is, until they're finally rounded up and then they're finally put up the chimneys. I'm not saying that that's going to happen in America, but let's look at the Soviet Union. Let's look at Cuba, where uh, let's look at our even even Argentina, which was very socialist, people disappeared. Go look at your history, but that's the problem. You see, they don't teach history today because they don't want you to know history because you might learn from history. And so sadly that our younger generation today was not thought, was not taught how to do critical thinking. Because if they were, they would say, let's look at this left wing communistic. Uh, socialist Marxist agenda that the BLM is bringing up and that the left is bringing up and this great reset of spreading the wealth, taking, taking away from the rich and giving to the poor, socialism, etc. Let's take a look at the countries that actually had this system, socialism and communism. Let's look at Cuba. Hmm, not living too well over there. Dearth, uh, deathly poor, no rights. Let's look at Soviet Union. Hmm, same thing. I just did an interview a few weeks ago with people who lived in the former Soviet Union to describe how they lived. Several families to one apartment, sharing a kitchen, sharing a bathroom. Let's look at North Korea and how they live. Let's look at Nor- uh, North Vietnam. And how they lived compared to South Vietnam, where the Americans were. Look at any of these countries, you'll see, hey, it doesn't work. It may sound good on paper. It may sound good in discussions. 
when you're sitting there as one of the cool woke people sipping your cappuccino espressos, whatever it is, with your lattes and your cream and your whatever they have today at places like Starbucks where the beautiful people drink their coffee and they talk about it. It doesn't work in real life. And let me give you a perfect example. The Israeli kibbutz. You've heard about a kibbutz before. Kibbutzim, that's the plural of kibbutz. They're very nice places. I lived on a kibbutz for a while. And they're very nice places. But they started out extremely communistic. You didn't get to choose what job you wanted to do. The collective, the government of the kibbutz would tell you, you're working in the chicken house, you're working with the children, you're working in the fields, you're working uh, in the kitchens and washing dishes and peeling vegetables. And that's how it was. That's how it was when I went there. I was told what job I was going to do. There was a few months that I went out picking grapefruits. That's what I had to get up in the morning, four o'clock in the morning to go and do that. Then one, one time I worked in the kitchen and at one time I worked in the laundry and one time I worked with the children. I didn't get to choose. It was where the collective needed me. And it wasn't me. It needed a person because there is no me's. There is no individualism in a communist government, in a communist power, way of life. They're like the Tower of Babel. In the Tower of Babel, they had the collective building a tower to go into heaven, to dethrone God, and we would become the masters of our own destiny. Who needs God? We're going to redefine what's good and what's bad. You're not a a, 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 a sexual pervert. You're just doing an alternative lifestyle. You're not a stripper. You're an exotic dancer. You're not a uh, a juvenile delinquent. You're a misunderstood youth. They just remarket things. They relabel things to give it the agenda that they want. In the Tower of Babel, when they climbed up, bringing the bricks up there to build higher and higher and higher, if a person fell off, they didn't really care that much. But if a brick fell down, They would cry and cry and cry because, oh my goodness, we have to bring another brick up because the individual meant nothing. Only the collective agenda meant something. And if you like being an individual, if you like having your own opinion, if you like believing in the God that you believe in and raising your children and your family the way you want, you will not be happy in a communist society. And ask anybody who lived in a communist society and then came to live like they did in the West. I think they would concur. We'll be right back. You're listening to Israel News Talk Radio. This is Shai Bentico, and each week I'll be webcasting to you from Judea, origin of the word Jew, a people besieged and beleaguered in every generation. Nazi Germany is but a memory, but in its place the world invented the phantom Palestinians as this generation's internationally authorized Jew killers. Tune in for a different slant on life in Israel. Phantom Nation, every Monday. Hi, I'm Rabbi David Aaron. The soul basics are the most profound, the most essential, and yet often the most neglected in our education. Join me for Soul Talk on Israel's News Talk Radio and discover the secrets to love, spiritual growth, and personal power. So I talked to you about other countries that uh, had this communist dream where everyone was going to have a great reset. Everything was going to be equal and everybody was going to have the same and there would no be there wouldn't be such fat pigs. Oops, I used the word pig and there wouldn't be the poor little rats. Oops, I used the word rats and uh, everything was going to be la di da utopia. 
But you know, when they tried it in Israel also, on a much smaller scale, there were a lot of different kibbutzim. They started out like that as well. But fortunately, (laughs) they realized after trying their experiment of their utopian communism, that there's a better way. And the good thing about kibbutzim was, and this was from the very beginning, it was always voluntary. You weren't stuck behind a wall and borders with soldiers gunning you down if you try to escape, okay? People, some people in the kibbutzim even worked outside the kibbutzim, came home every day. They didn't own the car. The kibbutz owned the car, but they were able to take it because they were, their salary would go towards the kibbutz and then it would be doled out to everybody. But you see, it didn't work. They saw that there's a better way and they went capitalistic. Now, I want you to imagine that America slowly, slowly, God forbid, and as the left takes over, as it did in other countries, starts to do these things. I want you to imagine it because it's not far-fetched because it's already been done. It's already happened. You know, when I was reading this book again about Iran during the Islamic Revolution, she was talking about the modesty police. There would be people who would be standing on corners next to a van in order to take you away if you weren't conforming. And they would stop you in the middle of the street and say, I want to search your bag, your, your, your bags or your purse. Or they would stop your car and say, open your trunk. We want to see what's in your trunk. And if you didn't conform, you could be taken away. If you weren't modest in the way that they thought, you could be taken away or beaten. Can you imagine if the less left communist government that we're seeing taking over, in my opinion, in the United States, doing the same thing, having snitches, snakes, oops, I use that word snakes, having snitches snitch on you because you are leaving too big of a carbon footprint. You're using an American refrigerator when you should be using a Chinese-made refrigerator. Because Chinese-made refrigerators, they say, I'm just giving an example, it's not true what I'm saying right now, just to give you an an imaginary uh, um, thing to work from, that these, or this brand of refrigerator that the government approves, right, that Washington, D.C. put a stamp of approval on this one because this one's green. If you don't have that refrigerator, then you're using too big of a carbon footprint and not only are we going to fine you, but we can even arrest you maybe. Maybe you'll disappear because you are not conforming to what is good for the global world, for climate change, for global warming. You're an enemy to the people because you like to have a big American refrigerator or a big American washing machine or an American-made car. That's not approved by Washington, D.C. or not approved by the government. And your neighbors rat you out or even your children. When they have your children in school, I I remember reading this in this book of, of the Iranian Revolution, thinking how simply could be applied to America, but with a little bit different details, how it was forbidden for Muslims to drink alcohol. And so in order to find out who's secretly doing it, they took kindergarten children and children in first grade and they put bottles of liquor or even just drawings of it in the front of the classroom. They said, hello, children, who has seen these items in your house? Do you hear what I'm saying? Children without even realizing it, realizing it can be ratting out their parents. Hello, children. Who has a red hat that says MAGA on it? Hello, children. Whose parents go to church or go to synagogue or go to uh, wherever? Hello, children. Whose families do this or do that? It can come a time also that you can't travel without a permit. I mean, even right now when they close down the airports and it's happening here in Israel, you cannot travel. You have to have special permission from the government to leave to prove why you need to leave. And they will decide whether they let you book a flight or not because they've canceled almost every flight. You're living right now under martial law. 
and you're taking it, and I'm taking it. We're all taking it because the consequences, oh, we can be fined. We can be taken away. It's scary. What if I leave? Who's, if you're the breadwinner of your family, who's going to support your family if you get arrested? How are you going to afford a lawyer? We're, we are forced not only to abide by these laws that are against the U.S. Constitution or against our inalienable rights or against common sense and decency in any country that you're living in, including Israel, by the way. We are being threatened that we cannot live like this because we'll have to pay the consequences if we do. What happens when they come and start telling us we can, we can only have one child? Because having more than one child, and they've already done it, by the way, in, in communist China, we shouldn't say China anymore. And I don't hate Chinese people. I have Chinese people in my family, and I love them. And there's, and there's probably billions of very nice Chinese people. But the government of China, we should not call it China any, anymore. We should always refer to it as communist China. Communist China where they had the rule that you can only have one child. What are you going to do when the leftists go crazy with power and start telling you, if not legally at first, just peer pressure-wise, don't have more than one or two children? Or how about this? Don't have any children. Only certain families will have children. The one that government chooses to have children. Because they leave too big of a carbon footprint. And we have to take care of the planet. You see, they can control us through money as well. They want to do this big reset now. And perhaps all of these people losing their businesses, their jobs, is in order to make that happen, to take more control, to make people more reliant on the government because you're out of a job, because you lost your business. You're going to be much more dependent upon outside help And I want to end this show. I don't have much time, but I want to say that it's not enough to sit and complain. We have to fight back properly. And I'm not talking about violence. I'm talking about words. I'm talking about identifying the truth, identifying the enemy. And remember that wars are never won when fought defensively. We can't sit and say, this is wrong. This is not right. Do you have some reason? Come on, President Biden. Uh, you wanted unity. Let's make unity. Come on. We, we, we're living. No. We say what it is. Communist China. We talk about the communist revolution in America. We talk about the left sitting in the White House. You've got to point your finger and attack back with the words that describe exactly what it is, the truth, and not lie anymore. When they make us lie about men being women because the man wants to be identified as so, or the women wanting to be identified as a man, we have to lie and say her instead of him or him instead of her. Today, we've been so brainwashed, we're thinking that's the right thing to do, and it's the kind thing to do, and it's the decent thing to do, but it's a lie. Let's remember what the truth is, what the truth was, and not be bombarded by a lying media, a lying government, a lying left. We must fight back on an offensive way with, the cor- with correcting the way we talk, with pointing our fingers to the truth, showing it to everyone, and not taking it. You know, I want to read this really quickly before I go. I'm holding in my hands here a paper. This is from California. It's a voting ballot, official ballot. I think it's called Proposition 16, but it says number 16 here, State, uh, state Measure 16, vote yes or no. This allows diversity as a factor in public employment, education, and contracting decisions, legislative constitutional amendment. What does it mean? Permits, it, it permits the government decision-making policies to consider race, sex, color, ethnicity, or national origin in order to address diversity by repealing constitutional provision prohibiting such policies. 
So they're saying we want to go against the Constitution and start giving jobs to people who we think should get it, not because you're the better candidate, but because we want to put more uh, Asians or blacks or Latinos or, or, or whatever they want, uh, 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 homosexuals, whatever it is that they want in, not on their merit, but because they want to have their, what do you call it, uh, uh, you know, oh, well, we have one of those working here. We have one of those, diversity. And guess what? I understand that this passed. If you think these things can't happen, they're happening. And the more you stay quiet and the more you don't say the truth, the faster and the more dangerous this is going to become for all of us. We are individuals. That's how God made us. We have a right to our opinions. We have a right to our candidates that we want to vote for. We don't have to apologize. We don't have to be silent. We have to tell the truth. And we have to point our fingers and say exactly what it is. Communist China and a communist revolution that took place in America, people just don't know it yet. You're listening to The Tamar Yonah Show here at IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com. Israel News Talk Radio's chat room. Just click the orange button at the top of the IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com page, log in as yourself or an anonymous guest, and join in on the fun. You'll meet other listeners from all over the world who listen to Israel News Talk Radio, and you can make new friends. Israel News Talk Radio's chat room. It's the closest you can get to being in the studio with us. We love listening to Israel News Talk Radio. Where can you get the inside news on Israel? At Israel News Talk Radio, we're dedicated to sharing Israel's inside story with the world by providing our listeners with news on Israeli politics, current affairs, and Israeli Jewish culture. The Israel News Talk Radio homepage also provides you, the listener, with useful information at your fingertips. With scrolling news headlines, weather, currency exchange, Shabbat candle lighting times, and so much more. Our radio programming is always accessible and on demand. We operate absolutely free of charge for everyone, everywhere. If you love what we do, partner with us now by becoming an Israel News Talk Radio supporter. With your support, you'll be inscribed on our Israel News Talk Radio Wall of Fame. There's nothing like us in the world. Be part of something great. Israel News Talk Radio. Straight talk from Israel. If you love Israel News Talk Radio, then you'll love our Facebook page. We keep you up to date on what's happening in Israel, plus little surprise treasures that we don't share on the radio. Go now to follow us on Facebook. Just look for the Israel News Talk Radio Facebook page and don't forget to subscribe and follow us by clicking on the like button. We post great stuff there that you'll want to share. Israel News Talk Radio on Facebook and Israel News Radio on Twitter. News, opinion, and more. You're listening to Israel News Talk Radio. 